praying in God's will. To experience answered prayer, we are to align our praise and petitions with God's revealed will. Here's Gene Getz. This principle regarding praying in God's will is reinforced, really, from Genesis to Revelation. Here, of course, it's illustrated in the life of David. And you see, after God revealed His will through Nathan the prophet, uh, David responded by praying in harmony with what God had said. And we, we find this in uh, chapter 7 of 2 Samuel, verses 25 to 27. This is David praying now after having received this message from Nathan regarding the promise, regarding the Davidic covenant. And so David prayed, Now, Lord God, fulfill the promise forever that you have made to your servant and his house. Do as you have promised so that your name will be exalted forever when it is said, The Lord of hosts is God over Israel. He continues with this prayer, and he says, The house of your servant David will be established before you since you, Lord of hosts, God of Israel, have revealed this. And let me just say, that's a very key word. Lord, you have revealed your will. That's what David is saying. And what he is saying is, I'm praying according to your will. God of Israel, you have revealed this to your servant when you said, I will build a house for you. Therefore, your servant has found the courage to pray this prayer to you. Now, the important thing about this prayer, he's praying in harmony with God's will, which God has already revealed in this particular situation. Now, this leads to something I think we all need to acknowledge, and that is that prayer is a divine mystery. Uh, we're to pray, but we're to pray according to God's will. And it's interesting, we have several significant verses in the New Testament related to that. Look at James chapter 4. You do not have because you do not ask. Well, isn't that interesting? There are times we don't receive because we don't ask. But then, James goes on to say, you ask and you don't receive because you ask with wrong motives, so that you may spend it on your evil desires. So there we have uh, false motives. And that's the reason that God doesn't respond. We're not praying according to His will. 1 John chapter 5, we have another reference to prayer. Now this is the confidence we have before Him whenever we ask anything according to His will. You see, that's the way David was praying there, according to God's revealed will. Whenever we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. And if we know that He hears whatever we ask, we know that we have what we have asked for. So here you have a reference to this principle of praying according to the will of God. In fact, here's the principle that comes from this passage that we have in the New Testament. Principle 16, effective prayer. When we pray, we should always seek to voice requests that are in harmony with God's will. And there's a great deal in Scripture where we know what God's will is. But when we don't know exactly what God's will is, we need to pray, if it be your will. You know, see, James made reference to that when we say, I'm going to go to this city or that city, I'm going to invest, make money, do this. He said, you always should pray, if it's the Lord's will, I will do this and I will do that. So that leads us to um, a reflection and response question in terms of the mystery of prayer. How should we respond to someone who asks, if God is sovereign and knows everything relative to our time and ahead of time, then why pray? It's a valid question, isn't it? Let me point something out. I have a friend, Ken Boa. He wrote a book called God, I Don't Understand. And I can identify with that because there are a lot of things I don't understand. And he raises several perplexing questions. For example, question number one, how can Jesus be both God and man? Now explain that. How can He be God, the perfect God and perfect man? Here's another question. How can God dwell in eternity and yet act in time? Boy, that's a mystery. 
How can the Bible be both divine and human in its origin? And yet, the Bible is both human and divine. How do we put those two together? How can God be three persons and yet one God? A lot of people try to explain that. You can't explain it. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Yet one God. You see, Christianity is a mystery. A lot of mysteries. How can God be sovereign and man still be free to choose? We are free to choose. And yet God is sovereign. How do you explain that? Well, that, you see, is we can ask the same question about prayer. How can prayer be reconciled with God's providence? And by God's providence, uh, I did research on this, and I, I have a couple quotations I'd like to share with you. Uh, for example, Dr. Strong, who's a great Baptist theologian, said, Providence is that continuous agency of God by which He makes all the events of the physical and moral universe fulfill the original design with which He created it. That's God's providence. Here's uh, Oliver Bushwell, great Lutheran theologian. Listen to what he wrote about providence. God is not only the creator of all things, but He continuously sustains and rules all of His creation. Explain that. That's a great mystery. Uh, here is uh, another quote. The doctrine of providence tells us that the world and our lives are not ruled by chance or by fate, but by God. See, when we're talking about providence, we're talking about God's sovereignty, about God's great plan. And this leads to um, a word or a phrase uh, or a concept that we use to describe this. And it's a, um, it's a biblical antinomy. And, and a, a biblical antinomy are two biblical truths that from our human point of view appear paradoxical and even contradictory. But from God's point of view, they align perfectly. That's an antinomy. Two biblical truths that from our human point of view appear paradoxical and even contradictory, but from God's point of view, they align perfectly. And that's a concept we three see through all of these basic questions, these great mysteries in relationship to who God is and what He's designed for us. So here are some biblical guidelines, I think, for prayer. And that is, in summary, God responds to unselfish prayers. We see that. In James 4.3, God responds when we pray in faith, but according to His will. We see that in 1 John 5. And God responds when Christians pray together in love and unity. And if you go back to uh, Matthew chapter 18, you will see that uh, Jesus talks about where two or three are gathered in My name. There I am. And if you ask anything in My will, I will do it according to My will. And so you see that unity and oneness are very significant in, in answers to prayer. And finally, at least an implication, I think, from God, our wonderful Heavenly Father, and that is that God responds to prayer with answers that are best for each one of us. In other words, God knows what is best. And as a wonderful Father, He gives us what He knows is best for us. So, here's the principle from the life of David here in 2 Samuel. Praying in God's will, to experience answered prayer, we are to align our praise and our petitions with God's revealed will.